Hello and welcome to Debunk the Funk. I'm Dr. Wilson, and today's episode will be an anti-vax fail compilation. So if you enjoy laughing at anti-vaxxers and their horrible misunderstanding of science, then get ready because I've got three great examples for you. Starting us off with our first fail is an actual scientist named James Lyon Wheeler. Even though he's a real scientist with an actual degree, we will quickly see that he has no clue what he is talking about. Hi, I'm Dr. James Lyons Weiler from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the Institute for Pure and Applied Knowledge. I came here at the request of people who wanted to help have me help educate the Ways and Means Committee meeting uh, committee on the uh, biology of uh, the epidemiology of measles and uh, uh, infectious diseases. With respect to the bill being considered to remove personal belief exemptions, medical ex uh, and religious exemptions. So currently in the state of Pennsylvania, if parents want to send their children to public schools, they have to get their children vaccinated. But there are three exemptions to that rule. One is medical. That makes a lot of sense. If your child cannot be vaccinated for medical reasons, then they can still attend public schools. But on the list of exemptions is also philosophical and religious. That means that if a parent philosophically disagrees with vaccines for any reason whatsoever, then they are allowed to opt out of vaccination and still send their children to public schools. The bill that Dr. Wheeler is speaking out against in this video is one that would remove religious and philosophical exemptions from that rule, meaning the only children who aren't vaccinated and allowed to go to public schools would only be unvaccinated because they have a medical condition. What we, I think we should be talking about is how do we canvas the population and do studies to, to look at their genetics to see if there's an increased risk of vaccine injury uh, that we can then use as prospective biomarkers to predict who would come out with a bad outcome from vaccinations. That's actually not a terrible idea, but serious adverse effects due to vaccines are extremely, extremely, extremely rare. And we already have ways of predicting whether or not an individual is going to have, say, an allergic reaction to a vaccine, which is one of the worst adverse effects that could happen. And so what you're saying is not really a good reason to allow parents to choose whether or not they can vaccinate their kids. So if Dr. Wheeler is advocating for less strict vaccine rules, then he's not off to a great start. Vaccines don't have a rational design. They're, uh, it's assumed that we're, we heard from doctors earlier, vaccines are safe, vaccines are effective without any caveats at all on the safety issue. In reality, vaccines are not safe for some families. Vaccines are deadly for some families. Like any medicine, there are caveats and there are side effects, but the serious side effects are really, really rare and most often are due to allergic reactions, which, like I said, we can predict. Overall, vaccines are safe and extremely effective. So I'm happy to say that Paul, Dr. Paul Thomas and I are doing vaccinated versus unvaccinated studies. He's a local pediatrician here who's extremely ethical. Oh no, not Paul Thomas. You mean this guy who I did a previous video on? So remember, only 15% of the cases, 10 to 15% of the cases are actual influenza. Nope, not true. And then it's, if the flu shot's only 15% effective, we're down to about 1 to 2 percent effectiveness. Why bother? He did not do the math. Yep, good luck doing solid science with that guy. What I hear a lot today from the people that showed up yesterday at the rally is I, is I hear that this is a, a matter of freedom, a matter of choice, a matter of liberty, um, and that's absolutely true. Yeah, how dare the law demands parents take proper care of their kids. The last thing that I want to say is, like pertussis and like the mumps, there is strong science that shows that measles infections, once you get a, a, a group of kids with measles in a population, 46 to 70 percent of the transmissions that occur, occur from people who have no symptoms whatsoever. Like the mumps, like pertussis, you end up with asymptomatic infections. These are carriers that bring the measles into the school without any symptoms whatsoever. And if we think about it for a moment, that means that we need unvaccinated kids in the schools to identify that there's a school with a transmission chain so that the kids with them who are immunocompromised can know that those families can know that they need to take special st steps to make sure that their kid doesn't get exposed to measles and there's the fail Wow so this scientist is actually saying that because measles transmissions come from asymptomatic carriers that we need 
unvaccinated children in schools to alert us so that we can tell the immunocompromised people what to do when there's a measles outbreak. Guess what, genius? There's a huge problem with your plan. Even if we know that there's a measles outbreak happening in the school because we had unvaccinated kids there, those unvaccinated kids have already exposed the immunocompromised children and everybody else in the school to measles. If only there were a way to stop those people from carrying the virus in the first place. Oh yeah, we have one. It's called a vaccine. And that is uh, 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 the ultimate irony here is that this legislation would remove these kids from school. Schools will still have every three to four years, measles will come into the United States. That's the natural epidemiologic cycle of the measles virus. They'll, it'll come into the United States, we'll have asymptomatic transmission, but nobody's going to be in a school to know that we have uh, a, 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 a transmission chain putting um, immunocompromised kids at increased risk. No, what's truly ironic, unbelievable, and absolutely irresponsible of you, Dr. Wheeler, is that you're using the defense of immunocompromised children as part of your argument, when in reality, the best defense that we have for these immunocompromised children is to vaccinate. Well, that's one fail down, but let's keep this train of awfulness going with fail number two. This fail number two has gotta be one of the worst anti-vax fails I have ever seen. And it all starts with a series of tweets from a former TV producer, Darla Shine. The first tweet reads, hashtag fake, hashtag hysteria. The entire baby boom population alive today had the hashtag measles as kids. Bring back our childhood diseases. They keep you healthy and fight cancer. Yep, she actually said that. I kind of agree with this guy's first response here. Anyway, there's more. Then she says, I had the hashtag measles, hashtag mumps, hashtag chickenpox as a child, and so did every kid I knew. Sadly, my kid had the MMR so they will never have lifelong immunity that I have. Come breathe on me. Yeah, I'll pass on that one. So basically Darla thinks that measles is no big deal and everybody should get it because it makes you healthier and gives you lifelong immunity. That is very, very wrong. And measles is in fact a very dangerous virus to have. I made a video on exactly why that is previously. But for now, this is not the big fail that you've been waiting for. That's right it gets worse. Remember in that first tweet, she actually said that having measles helps you fight cancer. Well, here she's presenting a study that she thinks supports that idea. She says, here is a study from scientists at the Mayo Clinic who were interviewed by CNN, and they say they have clinical studies that measles virus kills cancer. Well, let's click on it and see whether or not she's right. Well, let's go to the page here. Measles virus wipes out golf ball size cancer. Okay, that seems pretty convincing, but let's Read a little bit, read a little bit. Oh, what's that? Hmm. The virus strain was engineered and weakened in a lab and then given in a dose strong enough to vaccinate 10 million people. A weakened engineered virus. That's a vaccine. The doctors cured that cancer with a measles vaccine. Ouch, Darla. Like I said, Measles is a serious and dangerous disease. You don't want to get it. So just the idea that these doctors allowed a kid sick with cancer to become infected with wild measles virus is just insane. Of course the doctors would weaken or kill or inactivate the virus in some way before using it to help her own body stimulate its immune system in order to cure the cancer. <sighs> These anti-vaxxers, they don't know how to read their own sources. Ugh. Okay, so that's two anti-vaxxers with their horrible fails down in the flaming dumpster pile. Let's move on to our third and final fail, which honestly, no conspiracy theory fail video would be complete without. Alex Jones. Tune into Fox News or CNN or NPR or open up a local newspaper. It's the same message. Vaccines are 100% healthy and effective, never hurt anybody in the world, and everything's fine. Go back to sleep. But then if you ask for the insert of the vaccines, it says, may kill you, may paralyze you, may have cancer viruses. In classic Alex Jones fashion, he just rattles off a bunch of scary stuff, gives no sources, and expects you to believe him. Well, we'll go to the real source later, but for now, let's let him embarrass himself a little more. Oh, vaccines can be real. You can get immunity from them. They can be good. But see, 
they're putting other things in them. They've been caught doing it. And the inserts say it can cause convulsions or narcolepsy or epilepsy. They say it. So vaccines can be good and you can get immunity from them, but they're just putting evil little things in there to make it not work. Well, you know, if you know what's bad in a vaccine, Alex, you can make your own. You know, if you know the bad ingredients and the good ingredients, you can just design your own vaccine and have everybody take that instead. But instead you sell supplements on your website. With that fine print, you got to get grandma's magnifying glass to read it. And it says it can kill you deader than a hammer. Oh, okay. Uh, deader, deader than a hammer. I'll make sure to look for that when we read the vaccine insert a little later. Their greatest pleasure is you being radiated by 5G and you eating GMO and you taking deadly vaccines. What? Uh, there he goes, rattling stuff off again. So they got hundreds of vaccines that aren't even vaccines that they want to put in your body. And they're just seeing how many people they can kill and maim before you do anything. Oh, okay, okay. So the evil people's plan is to make vaccines which eradicate deadly human disease and then put evil little ingredients into these vaccines that make them poisonous and then give those vaccines to their own children and themselves. Why? They are psychotic demons. And that's where we stand. And that's why they want me off the air. Look it up for yourself. Okay, I'm done. Oh, my favorite. When an anti-vaxxer says, look it up for yourselves. Let's do it. So this is a package insert for the MMR vaccine. In it, you'll find a lot of information. A lot of it has to do with how serious measles, mumps, and rubella are. It'll talk about what cell lines they were grown in, how the viruses were prepared, what the ingredients are, etc, etc. It also includes many details on how to dose the vaccine and how to properly use it. But we're looking for what Alex Jones told us to look out for. So if we scroll further down, we'll eventually come to this section called contraindications. These are not side effects. These are things that should indicate to the doctor whether or not a child should or should not get a vaccine. The most obvious example of this is allergies. So an allergy is a contraindication, meaning that if a child is allergic to one of the vaccine ingredients, then they should not get the vaccine. But this is the section that Alex Jones would probably point us to, the adverse reactions. But notice in the very first sentence of this section that it is reporting these adverse effects without regard to causality. That means that during clinical trials or post-market monitoring of this vaccine, these are all things that were observed, but it doesn't mean that the vaccine caused whatever is being listed. With millions of children being vaccinated, not every adverse effect that pops up close to the time of that vaccination is going to be caused by the vaccine. A good example of this is listed right at the end here, and it's just the thing that would make Alex's Jones head explode. Even though death is the last thing listed in the adverse effects in this MMR vaccine insert, it makes it very clear that there is no causality between the deaths and the vaccine. It even goes on to say that in a huge surveillance study in Finland involving 1.5 million children over 11 years, not a single death was reported. Well, Alex, we did what you asked and looked up the vaccine insert ourselves. And either you didn't actually read it or you don't understand it. Either way, it's a big fail for you today. That's gonna do it for the first episode of Anti-Vax Fails. Those were three really, really bad ones. If there are any more bad ones that you've seen that you want me to cover, let me know about it. In the meantime, I'll be back next Tuesday, where I'll be covering more really bad measles information from our good friend, Del Bigtree. See you then.